Welcome to Log and to Learn Podcasts, North Lanarkshire Library's Learning Takeaway. This series of podcasts will help you to revise for Module 1 of your ECDL course, the European Computer Driving Licence. And don't forget, if at any time you want to know more, you can always visit our website at www.logintolearn.com. This podcast will provide you with information on the different types of security measures, including backing up and privacy. Backing up. In an earlier podcast, we discussed the fact that certain parts of a PC's memory are only temporary. It is there for good practice to save your work to permanent storage, such as your hard disk drive or file server, after regular short periods. This ensures that if a power cut occurs, only the data produced since the last save is lost. Certain software applications perform this task automatically. Apart from protecting data against loss due to power failure, an organisation needs to consider the possibility of total file loss due to a serious hardware fault, physical damage to the computer, possibly as a result of a fire, infection by a computer virus, theft or other malicious action. The loss of vital files may be inconvenient to an individual using a home PC for hobby purposes, but to a business user, large or small, the loss could well be catastrophic. It is therefore essential for strategies to be available that enable regular, complete copies to be made of all files which are identified as being critical to an organisation. This is known as backing up files and may be carried out hourly, daily, weekly or in any combination thereof. Regular backing up ensures that even in the event of a total loss of data, an organisation has an almost current duplicate set of its most important files, which it can rely upon to maintain business continuity. Storage containing the backed up material is known as backing store and should be treated as a very valuable commodity. The fundamental reason for backing up files is to ensure that they cannot be lost or completely destroyed while saved on the hard drive of the PC or the file server. It is therefore not totally secure to keep the backing store in the same room or even building as a source material because of the risk of fire. For absolute security, the backing store should be removed off-site from the working environment and more than one set of backing store media should be used in rotation. All backup media should be kept in a storage environment which is theft-proof, fireproof and waterproof. For an individual home PC user, such sophisticated techniques are unnecessary. However, some backing up should be carried out. Always try to bear in mind how much time and effort would be lost if your PC either switched itself off or blew up. If the former happened, you would lose all unsaved work. If the latter, you would lose all work saved onto your hard disk drive, as well as all application software installed in your machine. It is good practice to keep all the original media on which application software is supplied, that is, program CDs or floppy disks, in a safe place. It is highly likely that at some point, For whatever reason, you will need to reinstall application software. You should always make a point of backing up all the files that you have created yourself and saved to disk. Privacy issues. 
if there is any need to consider the content of certain files as being sensitive or confidential, the use of password protection should be used to prevent unauthorised persons accessing, viewing or editing the data. A password typically acts as a user's personal entry code to their own PC, software or files and would usually be chosen by the user and never divulged to anyone. Passwords should be changed regularly to prevent the possibility of misuse by unauthorised individuals. As well as password protection, most organisations or systems would require the use of a user ID, otherwise referred to as a username or login name. This is another level of access code that provides evidence of a user's entitlement to access certain areas of a network or system. A user ID would typically be assigned to users by the relevant organisation that is, the owner or administrator of the system or network in question. A number of users might be given the same user ID. This would identify to the system the fact that the user could legitimately claim access to the network. Also, it would identify the level of access to which the user was entitled. The password would also be necessary to identify the individual user and provide evidence of their entitlement to access their own files within an area of the network designated as theirs. It is feasible, therefore, if full use is made of password protection facilities, for the following security measures to be in place when a user starts up a networked PC. A password must be typed in to gain access to the PC. A user ID must be typed in to gain access to the network or system. A password must be entered to gain access to a shared directory space on the network server. A password must be typed in to gain access to a file saved in that directory space and a password must be typed in to gain authority to amend the file content by saving changes. The different levels of access given by different user IDs are known as access rights. It is important that organisations have security policies in place with regard to access rights in order that only appropriate personnel have access to the system and only appropriate personnel have access to sensitive parts of the system. These security precautions should be taken on top of normal, sensible, physical security measures such as burglar alarms, locks and keys, etc. Information security this term is used to describe methods of ensuring that data stored on a computer system is protected against being compromised or against unauthorised access. It is important that any organisation should have an active policy to ensure that security is not compromised rather than waiting to deal with any breach once it has happened. An information security policy should document such issues as the details of a user ID password policy as described previously. The personnel responsible for each level of security. Antivirus measures. Penalties for breaching security policy. Procedures for reporting security incidents. And procedures for educating staff about their responsibilities regarding information security. As part of overall security consciousness, individuals should be aware of the sensitive nature of information stored in portable appliances such as laptops, PDAs and mobile phones. If such a device was lost or stolen, not only could confidential files fall into the wrong hands, but personal information, addresses, phone numbers etc. could be misused by the finder and contact details could be lost to the company. 
All such devices should be kept safe at all times and password protection should be applied wherever available. Also, as much of the material as possible should be included in any backup regime. Thank you for listening to our podcast. For other podcasts to help you to complete the European Computer Driving Licence and more information on our services, go to our website at www.logintolearn.com or call our free phone help number at 0800 953 1010.